I am Razio. What is up guys, Raziel here, and I'm gonna go over these patch notes as quickly as I can. This is a huge patch, and I know we're all really frustrated because the servers are all down today for this patch, but this patch is massive. So what better way to ease the pain than to go over the patch notes and see what we got for Final Fantasy XIV patch 4.5, a Requiem for Heroes. So. This is Raziel again, as always, I will put the link to the full notes in the description below. Uh, but I will be your guide through this uh, little fiasco. Obviously I'm going to skip over some stuff that uh, isn't as important, uh, but if, if you want to read every last detail, go to the link and uh, we can continue. So get your coffee, get whatever, uh, whatever you need, you know, sitting there on a, on a cold ass Monday morning in January. And let's get right into it. Now, the very beginning, I want to point out uh, this right here. We've got uh, the following quests and duties are scheduled to be released in upcoming patches. Patch 4.55 will include Rival Wings, Hidden Gorge, and Eureka Hydados. 4.56 main scenario continuation and more Hildebrand Adventures. And 4.57, the world visit system will be implemented. And that's usually also going to be when the data center transfer is going to take place. The data center transfer will probably take place in 456 or 457. We don't know exact dates and when the data center transfer is going to happen, but that would be my guess. So, let's uh, let's move on. Patch 4.5 is 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 upon us. Uh, let's go right out of the gate. Obviously, there's going to be new main scenario, new main scenario, an entire new main scenario quest line that's going to lead us into Shadowbringers. Um, all the details are, are, are there as far new chronicles of uh, and chronicles of a new era quests have been added, which is of course the four lords. The final four lords encounter will be implemented into this patch, and of course the big thing, my big thing, return to Evil East, the last and final twenty-four man raid, very very Final Fantasy Tactics centered uh, for uh, Orbone Monastery, which I personally am very very psyched about. Uh, a lot of new side story quests have been added as well. Again, uh, I'm going to go over these so uh, a little quickly if, if there, we don't have a whole lot of detail because Square likes to hide the exact details of every single patch. They want you to discover them. Um, so, but the a Lone Wolf No More is added. Um, now, custom deliveries. More custom deliveries uh, are going to be added uh, in this, for the Disciple of the Land and Hand in Idleshire. Uh, and so there are the two quests there you can see new job quests of course it's going into a lot of detail I'm going to skip over a lot of the specific blue mage details uh, you can read them yourself if you're if you're really interested in that and it would take way too long to go over every last blue mage change but we know blue mage is coming uh, you won't be able to access it for at least a week after the patch launch um, Tuesday tomorrow but uh, it is in the game at this point so you have a you know, Blue Mage quest 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and uh, a second one at 50. Now, the rewards for the following main scenario quests will include 300 but Grand Company Seals, so there are the three quests there that you will get. Um, additions and adjustments made to the treasure hunt uh, in the Lost Canals of uh, Uznair, the Shifting Altars of Uznair, and the Hidden Canals of Uznair have all had uh, adjustments made to them. Grand and free company changes. The following dungeons are now available for your adventurer squadron command missions. The Fractal Continuum and uh, Pharos Sirius Hard are now added. You can do that with your uh, Grand Company uh, minions. New craftable items have been coming to the com uh, company workshop for your, for your submersibles and your airships. So new voyage destinations have been added. New items have been added, attainable through the voyages. And the maximum rank for uh, submersibles have been increased from 40 to 50. Housing. Um, of course, as was within every patch, they added in a bunch of new housing items. You can see them listed here. New furnishings have been listed here. Uh, but here's the big thing they changed for housing. The limited number of interactive furnishings has been displayed has been removed. As of patch 4.5, all items will be displayed regardless of how many are placed. Uh, the only time you won't be able to see them all is if you're still, you know, sitting in old school 32-bit Final Fantasy 14. Remember, 32-bit's not going to be supported in Shadowbringer, so for the love of God, download a 64-bit version of your operating system uh, to avoid this problem. Um, so, quite a few changes to housing. Uh, some very 
quality of life improvements. They're letting us go a little crazier with uh, the amount of items we put in the house. Uh, so yeah, if you want more, again, more, uh, more complete details on every last little housing change, you can read the notes yourself. Uh, but uh, there's also going to be new estate tags, so they have the cafe, florist, uh, photo studio, library, and haunted house. New orchestra roles have been added, so more music, guys, for your for your orchestras. Players can now use return and teleport from an inside and in room. This is pretty big change. Uh, it's very good quality of life change. So now you don't have to leave an in room in order to teleport or go somewhere else. You can just use your teleport and return spells to do so. Uh, new fishes have been added to the aquarium, new trimmings, new flower pots have been added. Okay, now we're getting to the Mandeville Gold Saucer. Of course, Doman Mahjong has been added. So, a whole new mini game uh, for those of you who like to kill some time with friends, and you can even queue to play Mahjong with players across your data center. Uh, you only have to be level 15 to play Mahjong. Um, again, it's the Japanese style Mahjong, so if you want to learn how to play, I'm not the guy to tell you. You're going to have to do that research yourself. But it's available at the Gold Saucer. You can play against NPCs. I'm sure it'll teach you how to play a very basic level uh, skill uh, in, in, in doing that. But to master the game, of course, you're going to have to play quite significantly and, and strategize that way. Uh, the Duty Finder, you can match against other players for a scene, uh, novice advanced four player um, with certain rules enabled or disabled all there. You can get ratings and rank up and uh, there's time limits to the turns and things like that. Um, you know, there's penalties for abandoning a match. You can check ratings and settings. So there's quite a bit of Mahjong going in. So if you want all the details, again, click the link. So the gate and Air Force One has been added. Uh, Air Force One is a shooter rider. Players board the Air Force and attempt to shoot as many targets as possible while riding along a preset course. Upon reaching the end, players will receive MGP uh, as a reward. So, how to participate, you can see there uh, on the map in the Gold Saucer where it is located. Um, so, if you're interested in that, go do that. The following adjustments have been made to Gates, um, Every Hour Earth Time, Cliffhanger, Air Force One, and Leap of Faith uh, is the schedule for that. Hourly 20 minutes past the hour Earth Time, Anyway the Wind Blows, Air Force One, Leap of Faith, and again, hourly 40 minutes past the hour, Anyway the Wind Blows skin change we can believe in and leap faith so the uh, the reward has been up from 2000 mgp to 3000 mgp uh, new prizes are available for purchase using mgp so more glam more shit uh, they also said they adjusted some cards there are new cards added and some cards that were previously only available through dungeons and other things you can get from npcs there are more npcs you can challenge now to triple triad so if you're a triple triad player more, more options there for you. Um, one option available for speaking to the Triple Triad Trader on Gold Saucer before you do a card exchange, now you do its Triple Triad cards. The following additions have been made to the Challenge Log. New Challenge Log objectives have been added, so there's more Challenge Log objectives for uh, Gold Saucer, uh, up to 5,000 MGP for a Challenge Log. And, uh, yeah, new Challenge Log objectives. So go, get, go use your Challenge Log, guys. They made some changes to Wondrous Tales. The rewards available in exchange for uh, Chloe's Gold Certificate of Com Commendation and the Silver Certificate have been changed. So they've updated Wondrous Tales. Uh, Omega Alpha Scape is now included in a possibility for Wondrous Tales and uh, more rewards. So Wondrous Tales is still a thing. Keep going at it and keep getting your your your, your loot. Excuse me. New emote event has been added. You can see it right there. You don't get much detail about what the emote actually does. Uh, the following emotes can now cause your character to face the target um, if it's within your line of sight. So Chuckle, Blush, Dote, Battle Dance, Furious, Angry, Think, Eastern, uh, Stretch, Water Flip, Crimson Lotus, Thavanarian Dance, Sundrop Dance, Moola Dance, Water Float, Xantazookin, Mega Flare, Laugh, Blow Kiss, Huzzah, Victory, Sulk Throw, Backflip, Spectacles, Power Up, Bomb Dance, Gold Dance, Moonlit Dance, Eastern Dance, Play Dead, and Diamond Dust. New hairstyles have been added. You see them there. Battle system. Now we're getting into some more of the meat. Again, the blue mage job. Blue mage job has been added. Everything is there. Uh, it, it goes into detail of what roulettes, what functions you can do. Again, I'm not going to go over every single one. We've heard, heard a lot of information about this. Again, click the link below if you want to do everything. Learning spells. It goes into more detail. Stuff we already know how to learn spells as a blue mage. A blue mage spell book. Active actions. How to equip them. So it's it's all there. 
all the Blue Mage stuff is there. The Masked Carnival, more details about the Masked Carnival. Again, this, you can find how to participate in the Masked Carnival in Old Oz Tips of Thaw. Uh, there are the coordinates there on the screen where you can start. Uh, the Masked Carnival is comprised of 25 stages in total. Uh, it goes into enemy weaknesses, results. Again, you want all, you want to read this, you know, ad nauseum, go ahead and, uh, and uh, click the link below to the patches. Okay. Now, here's the adjustments that we expected. They're pretty much blanket uh, for Monk, uh, White Mage, pretty much blanket uh, potency buff. So, True Strike went from 140 to 160, Snap Punch 130 to 150, Twin Snakes 100 to 110, Demolish 30 to 50, Dragon Kick 100 to 120, Fists of Fire damage don't increase from 5% to 6%. So, there's the changes for Monk. The changes for White Mage, uh, all their abilities pretty much that are Cure, Healing abilities have had MMT reduced. Um, recast time has been reduced from 60 to 45 seconds on the Seas, I think that's how you say that name? I, again, I don't, I, don't play, I don't play Healer, so uh, potency has been increased from 300 to 400. Healing potency has been increased from 300 to 400. Uh, Funerary Indulgence duration has been increased from 10 to 30 seconds and MMT has been reduced. Uh, now for the Machinist. Um, Split shot 25 to 30, slug shot 25 to 30, spread shot 25 to 30, hot shot 25 to 30, and increases physical damage dealt from 8% to 10%. Clean shot potency increases from ammunition effect is changed from 25 to 30. Uh, Goss round has been increased from 200 to 210. Ricochet from 300 to 320. Cool down from 25 to 30. Head split shot 25 to 30. Heated, uh, a heated split shot and heated slug shot 25 to 30. Heated clean shot 25 to 30. Roll actions, this will affect all melee DPS. The recast timer for True North has been reduced, it's been cut in half from 150 seconds to 90 seconds, so that's a big buff for pretty much all melee uh, for getting your positionals in. Also, they changed uh, the displaying of flying text. Flying text uh, for your pets will display much in the same way it displays it for your regular and damaging abilities, so it's much easier to see and track that way, which is a good change. Uh, enemy placement has been changed in Western Thailand, Southern, Northern, Middle Inosha, and more Dona. Uh, the new dungeon. Now we're getting an even deeper meat here. Gimlet Dark has been added with a level requirement of item level 360 or above. So it probably tells me that the loot that drops there is going to be 370, 375 at, at most maybe. Uh, maybe even only 365. I guess we'll see when we get in. Uh, a new trial has been added. The Wreath of Snakes. And of course the Wreath of... Wreath of Snakes Extreme has been added. So, 365 item level requirement. Uh, the Extreme version is 380 or higher to enter. Players will now receive the Power of the Echo, so the buff for failing, uh, for wiping, um, during the following trials. Hell's Cure and Hell's Cure Extreme. So if you haven't cleared those yet, uh, now's a good time, because if you're dying, it's going to get easier all the way up to 50% more damage and healing. Uh, during that encounter. The weekly reward limit for Omega Alpha Scape has been removed. And the weekly limit on Alpha Scape Crystalloids uh, is still in effect. So you can still only earn one Crystalloid a week, but they've reduced the number needed to get a weapon from 7 to 4. So get your 390 weapon. You can get it quite quickly now. Uh, four weeks per job. And uh, you can gear up in 380 gear from drops in depth. You could gear an entire job now uh, to 380 in the normal mode. Again, it doesn't say Savage Mode's um, weekly reward limit it was removed. So I think Savage Mode's is still in place. Now what I've been waiting for. The Alliance Raid Dungeon. The Orbone Monastery has been added. Look at this gorgeous picture. It is the monastery. You can see that it's got a lot of overgrowth now because it's been thousands of years. But that is the... Looks to be an image of... The first battle, the entrance to the monastery in Final Fantasy Tactics, and I am so psyched for this. It says the story for this exciting new raid, written by creator Yasumi Matsuno, director and writer, titles as Final Fantasy Tactics. So the guy who did Final Fantasy Tactics wrote the story for this, and Final Fantasy uh, 12. The boss designs are courtesy of guest creator Geta Anemia, creator and director of the Garo series. Prepare yourself for an exciting grand finale to return to Evilise. The level requirement for entry is item level 365, and you have, have to have completed the two 24-man raids prior, uh, Robin Astra and uh, Lighthouse. It's a 24-man raid. We don't know what item level uh, the drops are going to be. I'm guessing 375. We'll see, though. We'll see. Again, the 24-man raids have never been about item level increase, per se. Um, the rewards, you can get one piece of gear a week. 
uh, the same rewards as the other the other uh, uh, 24 man raids. The same the same things going through. But you also receive a token at the end, which can upgrade. Uh, you get one a week that can upgrade a 390 Genesis Tome piece to 400. So you can upgrade your gear to 400 uh, by doing this one piece of Genesis gear a week by doing this each week. The drop rate for the Lunar Kunfe Thief uh, in the Minstrel's Ballad, Sukiyomi's Pain, has been increased. So, yeah. Again, this is general. It's par for the course. Uh, rewards are increased. Like the, the restrictions are being dropped. The drop rate for uh, the Extreme has been increased. Players can now add party members during the Great Hunt Extreme. The minions, so uh, the uh, that's changed to the Monster Hunter World crossover. The minions obtained from the following raid dungeons will now always appear in Boss Room Treasure Chest, The Weeping City of Nock, and Dune Scythe. The following additions and adjustments have been made to Eureka. So I wasn't sure if they were going to nerf Pyros and Pagos with this first patch. I was wrong. They are. The option for prioritizing players has been adjusted. Uh, this is for looking for group and it's in preparation for Hydatos, which we're going to get in four weeks from today. This is a really awesome change. There's new sub commands, so now you can click one of these two buttons here, as you can see, and instantly change your Magia board to go either put your crystals into defensive or into offensive, so you don't have to sit there and shift and let it spin around manually. You can either set up macros that do the commands, which is forward slash Magia attack or forward slash Magia defense. So, you can either set up macros or you can just click those buttons on the Magia board themselves. The following just adjustments have been made to Eureka Pagos. The number of enemies that must be defeated to spawn notorious monsters have been decreased. The number of Pagos crystals received for defeating notorious monsters has been increased. The elemental level required to access the geothermal studies Aetherite has been reduced from 30 to 23. And the one for gravitational studies has been reduced from 32 to 25. So getting around Pagos is going to be much easier. Uh, they did similar things with Pyros. Pyros, uh, it's easier to spawn NMs. You get more crystals for beating NMs. And the Logos actions have all been significantly buffed. As you can see here, you can now have multiple Wisdoms effects on at the same time. Uh, things like that. You can read through all the potency changes they did to the Logos actions uh, yourself if you so choose. Pause the video or click the link in the description below. Uh, the recast timer abilities now be reset when entering dungeons, trials, and raids. Conditions for penalization when abandoning duties have been adjusted. This effect does not change, does not work in PvP. Uh, you can see the change there before it was abandoning a duty, entering with the maximum number of party members possible. If you left, you would get the, the debuff. Now it's abandoning duty after it has begun. So if you start a party and you're all together and you're like, hey, let's not do this, then you're not going to get the penalty. The following additions and adjustments have been made to the Raid Finder. Wreath of Snakes Extreme has been added. Hell's Cure Extreme has been moved to the Duty Finder. The duty is listed with Duty Roulette Expert have been changed. So now in the Expert Roulette, uh, Gimlet Dark has been added, and the minimum item level requirement has been changed from 340 to 360. The following duty has been added in the Trials of Wreath of Snakes. The following duties have been added to Duty Roulette Mentor, Gimlet Dark, Wreath of Snakes, and Orbone Monastery. The required average item level, item level to register for Duty Roulette Mentor has been increased from 355 to 365. The number of elegant tombstones received from certain duties has been adjusted. Uh, the Wreath of Snakes has been added to the list of challenges in Stone, Sky, and Sea. And here's another one. More items can be exchanged in Ballad Boot for Ralgo's Reach um, for Peerless Clan Mark Logs. Again, this is upgrading 390 gear to 400, and the item they're referring to is the one, the coin you get at the end of Warbone Monastery. You can also now upgrade. Uh, this is going to be a little further down, but I read it already. You can upgrade crafted gear from 380 to 390 now, much as you could the old crafting gear. So you can get your crafting gear all the way up to 390 which will sim better than a lot of the 390 gear. This Genesis gear, because it's itemized better uh, for certain jobs. So yeah, there's a lot of different ways to increase uh, your gear score. Moving on, we are looking at, uh, there's a whole slew of PVP changes. I don't PVP, but it looks like a lot of buffs have been going out for Paladin, Warrior, Dark Knight, Dragoon, Ninja, Summoner, Scholar, and Astrologian. Uh, and uh, some additional adjustments have been made to some PvP mats and traits. Again, if you're a PvPer, I personally am not. If you're a PvPer, uh, click the link in the description down below where you can pause the video as I'm scrolling through this. And you can read the changes for yourself. Uh, quite a few PvP changes, a lot of buffs uh, gone out. 
Um, especially here within frontline tanks and DPS, take 30% less damage and deal 15% more. Stuff like that. So look over these changes. If you're a PvPer, I'm not going to go into all the details about them because I don't really PvP. But quite a few adjustments have been made to the PvP uh, things in the game. So items. Of course, new sets have been added. There's going to be a Gimlet Dark set and there's also going to be a Oracle and Monastery set. Which one this one here is, I do not know. If I had to guess, I'd say that's the Gimlet Dark set. Uh, but uh, we will see. Uh, they're not going to give us, as always, all the details on every item added until later. Uh, new recipes have been added. Again, uh, some deliveries may not be sold desynthesized, some as expert delivery, deliveries and converted into material that previously weren't able to. Um, you can read all, all the details for all the individual items. Uh, there's been some visor adjustments on uh, the Mungake hat. Uh, let's see, new items can now be exchanged for achievement certificates. Um, again, here we go, so I said earlier, item level 380 crafted gear can be upgraded to 390 gear in Rogers Reach. So, hey, it's really itemized. Again, this is the best time to be getting caught up on item level in Final Fantasy XIV because there are so many different avenues. You can go to 380 crafted to 390, you can uh, get your 390 Genesis gear upgraded to 400 once a week. And of course, there's gear drops in the new dungeon and 24 man raid as well. Okay, oh man. In addition, new items can be exchanged for Aladdin Tombstones and po of Poetics in Idleshire. So, grade six items for Disciples of War and Magic. Uh, new recipes, of course, have been added. So, uh, Urinary Lumber, Chigusa Ingot, Chigusa Ingot for armor, Evergleam Ingot. Uh, Procoptodon leather, Procoptodon leather, interesting, and Stardust cotton cloth. And they've also made it easier to view recipes by category in your crafting log. So they've cleaned up the crafting log quite a bit. Uh, again, like I said, more custom deliveries are available where you can receive gil, XP, uh, and scripts uh, for a total of 12 custom deliveries being made allowed each week. Uh, let's see, there are the requirements you can see there. The uh, adjustments have been made to also custom deliveries. Uh, XP, Red Crafter scripts, Yellow scripts, uh, Gatherers, and uh, scripts of both colors have also increased. So you get more now. Uh, the acquirement, the required collecti uh, collectability when submitting minor and botanist items has been decreased. So more uh, crafting, uh, crafting buffs. Man, what the... Fuck is my hair doing that? Shit. Um, new items have been added to gathering points. New fish have been added to the game. Additional items can now be obtained uh, via retainer ventures. Mining ventures, Hawkside, Botany ventures, Hardened Veteran Tree Set. Uh, again, new mounts have been added. This is the new mount you get if you uh, have all the mounts from the previous um, Extreme Mode Primal. So go ahead and if you have that, you're going to get that mount if you've collected them all. Uh, they've added flying to the following mounts. The Dire Wolf, Unicorn, Nightmare, uh, Atheon, Xanthos, Glifaxi, Enbar, Markab, and Boreas. So those mounts can all fly now. Hooray! Go get, get up there in the skies with your with your old mounts. Um, music has changed for a few mounts. You can see, you can see them there. Uh, which mounts got new music. New Chocobo Bardings has been added. And new minions have been added as well. Again, like I said, big patch system. New achievements and titles, of course, this comes as normal par for the course when you have new uh, zones and new dungeons and new raids added. Uh, the uh, titles get adjusted and new ones get added. So you need more, again, the new duties to count towards certain achievements. You know, I need your Gimlet Dark, Wreath of Snakes Extreme, and Orbone Monastery. And the Wreath of Snakes Extreme there, as you can see, four requirements of these. Uh, achievements have been updated in preparation for the upcoming world visit system we're starting to see implementations of uh, home worlds um, how to chat with someone across worlds as you can see here again if you want to read all the details the links in the description below or you can pause the video uh, the online status of free company members is now displayed while you're in a duty that's a great change players can no longer be added to the friendless or blacklist via character name alone so they did some changes to that um, you may now invite friends from other wor worlds to a party via the friend list. That's really, really, really cool. Uh, the world name is now displayed in the server info HUD, as you can see there. 
So that's uh, that's uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, the additional, uh, if a player accessing the retainer vocate menu when matched to a party via duty finder, they are not automatically exit that menu. The following additions and adjustments have been made to the group pose. Again, G pose has had quite a few changes to its UI and to what you can do. So look over those, to see all the details for how to set and get your screenshots for G pose. Um, so they also did some adjustments to the recorder. I know that's not a feature a lot of people use, but now. Uh, before it was a Tales Care and Alpha Escape Savage, Wreath of Snakes and regular Alpha Escape have been added as well. Uh, alarms adjustments have been made. Um, mount Guide has had some adjustments. So for your favorite mount selection, things like that. Uh, how many players are can ride the mount is now visible on the mount uh, icon itself. So yeah, some, some changes overall, some big changes to UI, some, some tweaks here to UI. Uh, you can display uh, a little more clearly uh, the friend filter, as you can see here. Uh, a new message is now displayed when accepting an invitation to join a party that has already matched and reached its maximum size. So it doesn't just air it out, it, gives you, it tells you why. Sound effect now plays and ready check is initiated. That's really, really useful. HUD layout setting now, uh, now allow the transparency of most UI elements to be adjusted. So transparency can be adjusted where before it could not. Adjustments have been made to display limits with higher priority given to nearby objects. That's good. The display of party members is now prioritized in all areas. That's very, very good. You know, Eureka, mass people. Now you can see your party all the time. Additions and adjustments have been made to the key bind menu. So if you want to get in more details there, it is more an adapt adaptation to the blue mage. Screenshots can now be taken quicker in quicker succession. Additions and adjustments have been made to text commands. So you can see all these. A lot of these have to do with the blue mage once again. Moving on. Additions have been made to the auto translation dictionary. That's always good. Additions have been made to the PlayStation 4 autocomplete dictionary. New music has been added, of course. The server backup function is now in beta for PlayStation 4. So you PS4 users, you can start backing up... Uh, uh, your settings, your hotbars, and all that, and all that shit, right to the the server. So if you swap or have to reinstall your OS on your PS4, uh, you can get your um, settings back very easily without having to go through the burden of setting it all up all over again from scratch. And then, of course, we have a list of resolved issues, which will be available soon, and then known issues can be found here. So. That is pretty much the patch notes, guys. Again, at any point in the video, pause it and look if you want to read over it, or you can go to the link down below. Uh, huge, huge, huge patch uh, that's coming out, uh, and we can start playing tomorrow. Me, personally, I'm going to get right into Orbone Monastery and Gimlet Dark and complete the MSQ. But, uh, yeah, guys, this has been Raziel. Uh, thank you for tuning in. If you like my content, please subscribe, like. It help, really helps a lot. If you didn't like the content, then why the fuck are you here? For real. Anyway, guys, this has been Raziel. As always... Keep it real.